Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to show you how to use the inline form set factory in Django. So this is very closely related to the model form set factory, and I'll show you how to use both to accomplish the same thing and why using the inline form set factory is a little bit better to accomplish what you want to do. But before I get into that, I just want to remind you that I do have my website, prettyprinted.com. I have more structured courses on there that cover um, various topics. So if you want to take a course where you can watch multiple videos on the same topic, just go to my website. I have both free courses and premium courses. So to get started, what I need to do is I need to create a model to use in my inline form set factory. And because it's an inline form set, it has to do with relationships. So basically you have two models, uh, one is a parent and one is a child. And what you want to do is you want to be able to edit all of the records for the child or add new records or delete them and have them automatically uh, associated with the parent record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, two models. So let's see, um, I'll create programmer model And I'll also create, uh, let's say, a language model. So this is programming language languages. Okay. So for programmer, I'm going to keep it really simple. The programmer is going to have a name. And then the programming language will also have a name. But in addition to having a name, it's going to have a relationship to the programmer model because this is where the important part comes in. I want to be able to, you know, I want to be able to associate all of the records in language with a particular programmer. So that's what I'll do. So um, I'll call this just programmer and models dot foreign key. And it's going to be programmer as the parent. And we'll say on delete um, models cascade. Yeah, I always forget this and I always spell it wrong, but it looks okay right now. Okay, so I have the two models. I have the uh, programmer model and I have the language model. So I'll go ahead and make the migrations for that. And then I'll actually migrate. And then I'll add it to my uh, admin so I can quickly add in some records just to have some data in there to begin with. So let's see, um, run server. And then, oh, need to add it to admin. So admin.site.register uh, programmer, and we'll do the same for language. And we have to import both, of course. Okay, so now they should be here when I refresh, they are. So I'll add a couple of programmers. One will be me, Anthony, and can't even spell my own name right. And another will be David. And let me just add the stir methods. And since there's a name here, I'll add the exact same thing. Just like that. Okay, so now I should be able to see David and Anthony. Okay, now I add some languages, just a couple just to be able to, you know, associate these languages with programmers. So uh, let's say C++ programmer, it's gonna be Anthony, uh, Python, sign that to Anthony, Java, we'll give to David, and hmm, what's one more programming language? Ruby, I'll give that to David. So if I were really doing something like this, it would be like a mini to mini uh, relationship if I were doing programmers and uh, programming languages because, you know, 
two programmers can know the same language. But since this is just an example, I'm doing it this way. It's more to illustrate how to use the inline form set factory. Okay, so I have the model set up. And now what I'll do is I'll go to my views and I'll import uh, those two models because I'll be using them from models import uh, programmer and language. All right, so what I want to do is I want to create a form that allows me to edit all of the languages associated with a particular programmer. So what I'll do is in my index, I'm going to take in an author ID or let's say a programmer ID. Eh, programmers can be authors. Um, I'll take in a programmer ID and I'll say uh, programmer equals uh, programmer dot objects uh, gets and it's going to be a primary key and I'm just going to pass that programmer ID in there. So I need to modify this to take in the programmer ID. So programmer ID, just like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with the programmer ID is in the first example, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, do this in a way to where I use a model form factory or a model form set factory. So let me go ahead and import that. So from Django.forms, I believe, I'm going to import model form set factory. Okay. And I'm going to use that to create this form set. So let's call this um, language form set. And I'll take that model form set factory that I just imported. Uh, I'll pass in the language model. And I'll say the fields that I want, uh, just one, I want name. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting the programmer. The programmer is from another model, and then I'm creating a model form set factory with language form set. So the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, eventually I have to associate the programmer that's passed in with this language, but for now I'm just creating the form set. So now what I want to do is just, you know, the basics of actually displaying the form set. So I'll say form set equals. Uh, language form set and I'm going to use a query set for this one because I want to limit it by the programmer so I'll say um, language dot objects dot filter and then um, programmer ID equals programmer ID all right, or how about this programmer dot ID just to keep it consistent. So I have that and then return render request. I'll create a template called index really quick and I'll pass the form sets to that template. So I'll create a new file. So I need a directory templates and then index. I'll keep this really simple. And I'll simply put the form set in there. All right, so that should be enough to see. So let's see if we can take a look. So I'll pass in one is the programmer ID. And we see uh, C++, Python, and then blank, which is exactly what I want. So I need to surround this by form tags. And then method is going to be post. And I'll be posting to the same endpoint, so uh, it doesn't really make a difference if I um, put in the action. And then I'll just do a simple submit button. Okay, so this doesn't do anything yet because I'm not handling the post case, so let me go ahead and do that now. So the language form set here is going to be common to both the get case and the post case. And just before I forget, let me add the um, cross site request for G token so it can actually post. So what I'll do is I'll say if request 
dot method equals post. I'm going to actually create the form set again, but this time the form set is going to be based off the post data and it's also going to use um, the same query set. So I can go ahead and copy this because it's pretty close to being the same. The only difference is I can pass in requests.post. So this is just like a normal um, model form set. So I'm passing in the request data that way um, I can associate the data that I filled in the form with the actual data in the model, which is the whole point of the form sets. So if I say um, if um, form set is valid, I'm going to save that form set, but I don't want to commit. So the reason why I'm not committing here is because if I try to commit here, it's going to fail because the, um, the language is supposed to have a programmer from the model. So right here, when I'm filling out this form, none of these languages have an associated programmer. I did use a query to get all of those here um, using programmer ID, but once the query is done, there's no connection between uh, the things that you see here in any programmer. So if I try adding another language here, it will give me an error because there's no programmer ID associated with it. So what I have to do is I have to say commit equals false, meaning don't actually save it to the database. And it's going to return all of the uh, instances of the things that I just created in the form, like the old ones and any new ones that I choose to create. Then what I have to do is I have to loop over those. So for instance in instances, what I'm going to do is for each instance, I'm going to associate the programmer ID with that instance. So instance dot programmer ID equals uh, programmer dot ID, just like that. And then instance dot save. So this will actually save it to the database. And then what I'll do is I'll just have like a redirect. So redirect um, index uh, programmer ID is going to be programmer dot ID, just like that. And I think that's it. So I just need to import redirect and let's see if everything works. So I want to associate a new programming language with Anthony. So I have C++, Python already, and I'll add another one. I'll add JavaScript. I'll hit save. And it tells me not null constraint failed example language dot programmer ID. So um, this is kind of what I was talking about. Uh, the programmer ID needs to be filled in. So I feel like I missed a place uh, where it needs to be filled in. So let's see exactly where the line was. So instance.save. Oh, I forgot an M. So it should have two M's, not one M in the word programmer. So let's try that again. So JavaScript, save, and there we go. So I have a new record called JavaScript and to kind of prove it, I'll go back here, look at languages, and we see JavaScript is there. And JavaScript is associated with Anthony. So if I go to number two, I see Java and Ruby. Those are the two languages associated with David. So I'll add a third one, C. And we should have another language associated for David. So if I refresh this, C appears, and David is the programmer. And the reason why this is happening is because the ID that I have here in the URL. So one is Anthony, I created Anthony first, and two is David, I created David second. So now what I want to do is I want to switch this around. I no longer want to use uh, model form sets. I want to use the inline form set. So I'll show you how this is used and it kind of saves on code. So inline form set factory is what I want to import. And now let's uh, just comment out the things that I don't need and I'll replace them with what I want. So I'll comment out this because it uses the model form set factory. And what I'll do is I'll just use the same name. So language format form set is going to use the inline form set factory this time. And with the inline form set factory, I have to pass two models to it. So I have to pass the parent model first, which is programmer and then the child model, which is language. And then the fields part is going to be the same, just asking what fields you want to use in the child model. 
So name is all I want. So next, what I want to do is I want to uh, remove the things that are necessary. So I have the form set here, and the form set will behave in a similar way. But uh, I no longer need a query set here. So let me comment out this, and I'll replace it with what I do need. So form set, language form set. So the name is the same. It's going to take in request.post, but instead of having a query set, it's just going to have kind of an instance associated with it. So instance equals the programmer that I got here. So this instance is associated with the parent of whatever I'm working with here in the form set. So a programmer is a parent of a language, so I need to pass in programmer as the instance. And then, and then what I want is to remove these because I no longer have to loop through each one and associate the programmer ID with it. All I have to do is call form set dot save, and I don't have to worry about saving for later because there won't be any invalid data. It's just going to go ahead and save it for me. So the redirect is going to be the same. And then finally, this form set uh, is going to be just like the one here, except it doesn't take in post data. So I'll just copy this and I'll put this below and take out the post since this is the git case. And then let's take a look at what happens. So I'm looking at David's now. I refresh and we see things look a little bit differently. So I still see the same names, Java, Ruby, C, but I see some extra things. I see these deletes and I also see three extra fields. So the three extra fields, that's not really uh, that big of a deal. That's just a parameter when you want to uh, create the form set. So if you want to have three extra fields, you can have three extra fields. If you want to have five, you can, but um, by default it's three. But the cool thing is you have this delete. So if I check delete for Ruby and hit save, Ruby is gone. And then if I refresh here, we see there's no more Ruby. If I add in a few languages, let's say Smalltalk, um, Scala, and Clojure, hit save. It adds those. I refresh here. We see those languages get added. And they should all be associated with David because I was using number one. And then, or I was using number two. So back to number one, these are the languages for Anthony. If I add in another one, let's say C sharp and hit save. If I refresh this here, I see C sharp there and it's already associated with Anthony. So we see I'm able to accomplish the exact same thing, but I'm using less code. So if you just look at the lines that are commented out without the pretty much the same line following it, then you know that's code that's being saved. So um, this is unnecessary now and just some extra things when you go to create the form set itself aren't necessary anymore. So if this is something that you need in your app, like a valid use case, like you want to have, um, you want to deal with forms that are associated with some parent, but you don't deal with that parent directly, then an inline form set factory is something that you can use in your project. So I hope all that helped. Um, I know there was a lot of setup in the video, but once we got into it, things went pretty quickly and we can see the differences between a plain model form set factory and inline form set factory. So just a reminder, um, if you want to go to my website, I do have courses on Django. So if you want to follow that in a structured way, just check out my website. Um, if you have any questions about this video, you can always leave a comment in the description or not the description in the comment section below and you will get an answer from me eventually. I check comments every few days, so I'll try to respond to everyone. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.